Don, Meow, Furion, and Lando heading into battle. Why is there so much fan art of this? He's lying to us. Mighty Ward, Darkwind, Avenging, Lord of Chaos, Hassan Piker with his mighty Avenging Chaos army. Oh my god. What? Repost from Twitter, my Twitter because it turned out cute. Oh, this is sick. This is a really awesome style. Fuck yeah. Hassan Piker's big day out. Hassan guy walking ball. Interesting. What is this? Hmm. This is motherfucking nothing. Oh god. How I be feeling these last few days, Sag? None of you motherfuckers don't care enough about a brother to even just see what's going on in a nigga life. Sometimes a nigga need a hug or something, you know what I'm saying? Azan took my friends. Sag, at least let me hug my offliner friends again. It made me feel so happy and cozy. No. Thank you, Azan, for being a revolutionary daddy. Hey, this is my anti-Italian discrimination. I don't even want to show this, because Black Lives Matter more than Italian, this is... Where will it stop? Broad community, happy February, y'all. Why then, though, no Italian History Month? Ah, Maron! This is sick. Overwatch 2? Alright, link it back to me. Link it back to me, motherfucker. I made Hassan as an anime character. I was gonna say, what, what's up with this jaw? But I realized that, you know... <laughs> Wait, is this real? Strange. What the fuck is this, dude? <laughs> Greetings to you. Same. Is this a fucking okay buddy meme that got trapped in here? What happened? It's like a new grounds. This is like new grounds era animation, dude. What the fuck? Watch your <laughs> Hey, look at me. Oh, looks like we got an audience. I'm getting good at this. I am in the groove. Do it online. I have no idea what this is. Look. Pog. Welcome everybody to BlizzCon. We know that you all want to hear more about Overwatch 2. Allow us to invite you behind the scenes to explain more of what we're doing and why. Everybody, please hit record. Fingers crossed. We lost Scott. <laughs> it's off to a good start. This is going great. We've been assembling one of the best teams that I have ever worked with I'm nervous. <laughs> and I'm so proud of the progress that we have made together. We really liked the stylized drop down. Imagine that it's coming forward, boom, boom. This starts to Dude, what the, the fuck is behind the scenes, dog? Game Why don't they just do like actual teasers? Just have, we have to do <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let me start. Over. Overall, I, I think we've done incredibly well as a team moving to work from home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shadow play. There have definitely been challenges, but the team is really putting everything we've got behind this game. To me, it's the next big step in the Overwatch universe. New heroes, game modes, major story beats. 
with competitive and PVE, I see Overwatch 2 as the Overwatch for all of my friends. You know, we're always inspired by what story and franchise development does with their animated shorts. We really wanted to bring that cinematic experience into the game. You can invest in your heroes and grow them over time. I am super geeked out about Overwatch 2. I can't wait for people to play this game. It just gets better and better. There are some things that we just can't do without a sequel. So thank you so like much what? for your patience so far. And I hope you enjoy this behind the scenes look at Overwatch 2. They're making a sequence so they can add a skill tree? All of our players at home, they want to see one of the new maps that we've never talked about before. Really? I can just like, I can just talk about anything that Every I want to. Every clip that they showed, they yeah, already you're, shown you're before, no? You're serving this up to the guy that is like unintentionally leaked information Everything. in past <laughs> interviews. <laughs> you can do it officially now. Okay. So one of the maps that I'm, I'm most excited for in Overwatch 2 is our Rome map. We always want Overwatch to feel like this globe-trotting adventure for our players. So we're having a lot of fun coming up with the Overwatch version of Rome. We wanted a very romantic Bro, this sort guy of looks this like powerful fucking, um, feeling of old world Manuel architecture. Ferraro. One of the most exciting things for me is the early building of these maps, where we get to sit down together with key people from the environment team, level designers, effects groups. We'll spend some time talking about Listen, moments in the game that we really want to see like the Colosseum or a grand view of the hills of Rome in the backdrop. And then we'll go back and do a paint over or we'll do a concept painting of certain things based on that. We try to draw inspiration from as many different sources as possible. For example, one of our environment artists had just taken a trip to Rome and he returned with thousands of pictures and was so excited um, to work on a map set in Italy there's a lot of what? ancient architecture in Rome that represents the, the empire that it used to be. So Sick, we dude. brought some of that back, <laughs> some of the things that are destroyed in real life, we kind of rebuilt in a kind of an Overwatch style. One of our one it's of our one developers of is literally responsible for the Italian strain of COVID coming to North America. The entire game and it just absolutely took my <laughs> I'm breath I'm kidding, away. I know it's pre-COVID. <laughs> Can we reveal more maps? Yes, Scott. <laughs> Scott, why don't you have the honor? Why don't you reveal, yes. like, is there an artified, like, let's pick an artified I, I one. Know, I know what map I want to talk about. It's the one that I just get super excited about. New York City. New York City is just an amazing Overwatch location. Another Italian map! We're really striving one, to make it as authentic Italian as map. possible while still putting this Overwatch spin on it. There's a lot of amazing buildings and architecture pieces that just, especially for artists, stands out a lot. And they usually use this kind of art deco style from the 1920s, 1950s. Hope gamers don't get we too mad. started in an area that's a little There's bit There's a lot like of POC the representation There's over here, you know? There's shops there. There's a fire station, little pizza places and things that people that are familiar with New York City will either recognize or maybe <laughs> see the reference that Someone we're trying to Someone said, finally, New York City locations. is represented in a so video like game. You haven't seen in other games before because it's uniquely Overwatch. Dude, Overwatch, Ro half the Overwatch well, roster POC. Guy, I was Otherwise, joking. Italians are not. more maps. <laughs> oh my so, God. We were talking about PVP and you know, one thing that I think is really interesting about PvP in Overwatch 2 in too. is some of the philosophical changes we're making to the approach. PvP feels different and new. We're upgrading our combat feel. The roles are playing differently. When it comes to all new maps, it's a pretty big departure uh, from where we are on live right now. So uh, I, I can't wait to see where we end up with it by the time we launch this thing. We're also experimenting with the idea we call role passives, which are passive abilities that a hero can have based on what role they are. For example, currently in our internal builds, uh, the tank heroes all have knockback reduction against them, and they also generate less ultimate charge for enemies that are shooting at them. Damage dealing heroes have a movement speed bonus, which is great for flanking around the map, and uh, healing heroes, support heroes have uh, automatic healing that kicks are in. They, did they, they literally just fucking make a, a, a new map? 
one of the more shocking changes and added a skill tree and they're pawning it Overwatch off as like a new PvP game is a change to the tank role entirely that's applied to all of the tanks we want to try to make them more toe-to-toe -to -toe brawlers and less characters that just stand back and protect other people so for example for reinhardt we've given him two charges of fire strikes so we can throw fire strikes a lot more aggressively and more often also his charge He's able to cancel it now, and you can steer it more aggressively, so you can, you know, not quite turn a corner, but you can definitely more accurately pin targets. And because you can cancel it, it allows you to use it much more aggressively and, you know, really go after those key targets without feeling like you're going to sacrifice, you know, all of your positioning and everything to get there. He's almost more terrifying now with this, to be able to unleash his full arsenal more often than kind of just being the guy with a shield. The changes to Reinhardt. Yeah, they trying. literally did a fucking and patch note uh, reveal. The they did a but they the did a reveal trailer for and a behind right the scenes for a fucking patch notes. Try dude. to embrace more of that instinct. That there are more updates on a fucking no pixel patch. A big burly character that looks aggressive and feels like it should be aggressive. Shortly after BlizzCon, we we spun up this group, our combat field group, um, to really just work on what happens when a player holds the trigger. We're putting a ton of effort into looking at all of our characters um, and trying to give them even a more visceral weapon feel. From sound to VFX to animation uh -huh. to the design of these units, all new sounds for, for a lot of our weapons in the game and a whole new sound system that's driving it. And we didn't just level up a unit, we leveled up the rest of the game. When we first started working on Overwatch, you know, we spent quite a bit of time working on gunfire sounds and just, just general combat feel to make it feel really awesome. Uh, we're revisiting pretty much everything. Nothing's off the table, so we're looking at... Even I'm not gonna lie, it, it's kind of bold. Like, it's, it's kind of revolutionary so, yeah, to literally a have a patch. And, uh, a new kind of feel and visual effect when you hit things. Like, selling a patch as like a, as though it's a new fucking game, it's pretty wild. I know that there's a single player or PV component to it, I get it, but... Big overhaul to the weapon systems in the game. That means the way the gun feels in your hands. Like, you it, it's pretty wild. Running out as you're getting lower on the clip. We really tried to amplify those sounds to better encapsulate the gameplay and the gunplay that comes with Overwatch 2. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm not shocked. I like, I mean, I, Call of Duty does more than this. You know what I mean? This meant working with convolution reverb. It's a new system. That we've implemented this is literally uh, a, a fucking madden and ea like what they do every year it onto the sounds that we're using so we went and captured tales of guns in different environments through our weapon shoots wow. okay that's pretty cool and then we've cut them and applied it so that we can support a lot more environments. Now we're supporting outdoor, urban outdoor, warehouse tails, tight tunnels, small rooms, and it gives a lot more presence to the weapons and the way that they react in the world. <laughs> the God, I'm giving EA way too much money. Watch one came out. On top of that, I think we really want to push the visceral nature of how we do combat. So we focused a lot, not just on the wonderful sound effects, but also with how the, the gun moves as you shoot. You know, so you can really feel every single shot leaving the chamber. And there's a lot of subtle little tweaks we have to do on the gameplay engineering side to make that feel really visceral. Everything from making sure that the camera shakes are crisp, making sure that if you get shot, you know exactly these tight indicators show up on the outside of your reticle. All these things play into making the game feel not just tight and responsive, but also modern and up-to-date. Take 76, for example. What we wanted to do in Overwatch 2 with his weapon was make it really feel incredibly powerful. And that happens with a bunch of different elements that mix together. But it really feels like the gun is almost just outside of your control. A lot of that comes down to this camera shake technology, where every, every time you fire the weapon, you want to feel like it's running through your entire body. And the camera shake gives that extra bite to every single shot out of the chamber. It makes him feel really great. You guys got a sneak peek of... We got revolutionary soldier. camera shake technology, boys. Uh, uh, for quite yep, a while, that's worth She's actually quickly at this point become... A I know I was being critical at first, uh, but uh, I, uh, I'm i eating my uh, own words now. Created. Um, there was a lot of heroes that were made from a gameplay standpoint kind of surrounding 
a weapon type. For example, Farah mm. is based on a rocket launcher hero. Widowmaker is clearly like kind of the sniper. We I thought there was like a weapon that was kind of free. missing that would be a lot of fun to play with, and that's a railgun. It's so much fun in the playtest to have this really powerful shot that can, you know, rip through enemies if you really are accurate with it. And she's she's all about that aim skill. So if you if you got that aim skill, you'll love her. We're still exploring new game modes, and we're also reevaluating older game modes that people are more critical of. You know, we're of the mindset, maybe maybe 2CP doesn't exist in Overwatch 2, and maybe there's a new cool game mode that replaces it. We really want Overwatch 2 to feel like the next evolution, a true sequel to the first game, not an add-on. It's not a small part. It's not an extension of the original game. This is an evolution and a replacement to the original game. And I think it's exciting. Hero missions are probably one of the things that's the hardest to wrap your head around if you've never played one of them. The goal around hero missions is for these to be this co-op PVE experience. I personally only play competitive mode. Like I'm all about that competition. And I have friends that they don't want to do that at all. So I'm really looking forward to a game that I can play hours and hours with, with my friends who aren't in competitive. And it's also something that I'm interested in. Hero missions are the content that people are playing as they are leveling up. This sucks. I'm sorry, okay. They're heroes and oh. so, for a system like this to really sing, you need a lot of missions. We don't want players to feel like they're just in this grind to get to the top. And there's a lot of really, really good backend technology that we're exploring so that the heroes are constantly bringing their personality and some light story to these hero missions as well. The goal is to make as many as possible, hundreds of hero missions. We've explored a lot of different ways of getting to that much content. So we'll have like different sets of enemy units that people will be fighting against. And there's different hero mission types. At the same time, hero missions can take place in all of the multiplayer maps that we've done. And we're also adding new spaces onto some of these maps. It's a huge challenge for the art team. We take maps that a lot of people love and recognize and we have to add a lot more art and level design to it. In this one hero mission play test, we came up to an area in King's Row that usually has a gate on it. Suddenly that gate opened and I saw a new area of King's Row that I had never seen before. You may be playing a payload game type and the payload may decide to take this new route instead of going the usual route. That was really, really cool. It was like this eye-opening special moment. They're joking, right? Like they added Land an ass into the fucking map? the tech artist on the environment side, very early on her own free time, made a prototype of a sandstorm on the Temple of Anubis map. And at the time, we didn't know what we wanted to do with that, but it looked awesome. We looked at it and went, oh my God, we absolutely have to do this. So we put some new technology in place that allows us to do this dynamically. You start the mission off, clear day, midway through the mission, suddenly this sandstorm or heavy you, weather bitch. would show up. It made the world just feel so much more alive. There's a sunset, daytime, nighttime. Never mind, it's worth it but now. depending on where you are in the world, these look different. Never California mind, it's worth it. They added weather. would have what we call a California sun. Fuck you haters. In Nubani, there's a great African sun that happens there. You start to get a sense of space and mood. This is what really brings the levels to life. For me, the dynamic world's exciting. Just seeing these dramatic landscapes, the wind and the atmosphere blowing by. It's a much more cinematic experience for the player. Before you start a mission, you look at a map. It's nighttime in Necropolis, or there's a sandstorm in Necropolis. Players can make some comp choices based on knowing this information. Characters like Hanzo or Widowmaker start to be a little more valuable because they have abilities that allow them to see through the sand more clearly. People who keep saying you're gonna get the game free if you have Overwatch are One are missing the point that like, types of objectives then don't call missions. it a new game yeah let's let's talk about the objective don't act like you're making a new game asked to do different things from one hero like, mission to the next so that they the all fuck? feel really it's just fresh a dlc
For example, we have Gather and Return. What do you mean, why? We're trying to go and grab these different canisters to kind of safeguard them so they don't go off and affect the population in a negative way. It creates this really cool tension in the world where, on the one hand, you're trying to split up and go grab all these canisters to be as efficient as possible. But at the same time, now you're having these sort of special enemy units spawn that are really difficult. And if you kind of get caught by yourself, it turns into a pretty bad situation really quickly. And it feels extremely cooperative and like a very different way to interact with the Overwatch. Yeah, you're universe. not even getting the game for free if you have overwatch one i think you just get the multiplayer sorts for free. of ideas and just internally we have names like wall of death scavenger hunt and kill quest and all these new mechanics and enemies for people to experience players will be able to jump in night after night play different hero missions and then work through the progression system leveling up their heroes wait at BlizzCon in 2019, we started to talk about progression and we showed the very early version Wait, of our so talent. Wait, so single player system, missions? Which I think was really cool. Give we you had that one talent where extra like extra fucking benefits in multiplayer. Did I misunderstand that? Hit. We've really blown that system out. I'm real excited about talents. You can play the same hero in so many different ways. Now with the skill oh, okay. tree, you can have fun every night doing different things and kind of experimenting. Yeah, the talent system is like really deep and rich and every single hero has different trees. You might open up 76's tree and as you're leveling and picking new talents, you're starting to feel your hero change. We've had some pretty hilarious versions of- It's basically, did you like Call of Duty zombies, but you're an Overwatch fan? Here, now we have Overwatch zombies, but instead they're robots. It's like running through spaces, pushing enemies away from them. <laughs> Designing these is super fun because it's like we get to break all the rules that we've sort of established for ourselves and uh, we get to really take the gloves off and do crazy things like Junkrat can do wield grenade launchers and we've had Mercy be able to area you effect res the whole cool. team at once I mean, at super long range like through zombies. walls. It's been a ton of fun, kind of like mad scientists making all this stuff. You're all used to using these kind of kinetic weapons like Soldier 76's rifle or fire attack like what Reinhardt's Flame Strike does. As soon as you start to mutate these things with talents, all of a sudden maybe you're doing freeze damage or electrical damage, but it gives the animators a bunch of crazy opportunities. You know, the animations are going to change to show them freezing and shattering. And if you, you know, shock someone with a lightning attack, they can shake in place and stun, maybe chain to other enemies. All sorts of stuff to make them feel like you're controlling the battlefield in novel ways. As a huge RPG nerd myself, the first time I opened up the talent tree system, it was like, oh my gosh, this is this is speaking my love language. Like, I just want to plan and I want to see like, where do I want to invest and how am I going to play this character? Yes, it's so great. And you're like, <laughs> you start at the bottom of the tree. Like, yes, oh my, exactly. like Tracer gets to do what? Yeah. And then you start working and kind of planning how you're going to get down there. It's like, oh, yeah. it's so fun. <laughs> What? When we look back at BlizzCon 2019 and we talk about some of the criticisms that we had, one of them as a development team that we Did they just describe how skill trees work was just not engaging and then added sound effects on top of it? Combat I'm... wasn't highly engaging to us as players meant that we had a problem with the enemy units and that they just weren't feeling interesting enough. Just because we show something to the public, it doesn't mean that that is what it's going to be. If we make discoveries where things aren't working how we want, they're not reading how we want, they're not fun enough, we're totally down to reinvestigate, reiterate, and just really find ways to level kind of all aspects of things until they feel good. I would say a major focus of all of 2020 was to make the null sector enemy units more engaging. And some of this was adding new units and evolving other units that we had. Interesting combat for us is varied combat for us. So sometimes we're going to ask you to protect something in Overwatch 2. Sometimes we're just going to ask you to get someplace. Sometimes we might ask you to escort something across a map while it's being attacked. And so it's a different type of spawning and it's a different type of units that are that are in there and it's a simpler objective. There's a lot of units Aaron is talking about. Lots of different units, lots of different types. They serve different purposes. You do different things to them. It's really gonna help a lot of us find the fun and make sure that Overwatch 2 is a blast. One of those sets of, of enemies is, is what we internally call objective units. And they're typically units that 
don't even attack players. The simplest version. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty like funny to region. watch gamers get owned and owned again by the long back. dick of capitalism to do one thing. that allows Slowly gigantic corporations that have monopolized and have completely taken over the gaming marketplace to just serve you fucking dog shit. Opens up like Marginally flower, improved dog shit as though it's like completely up, a full awesome five course meal that you've never tasted before. The time before it's gonna explode and you have to take it out. I don't even think this is dog shit per se. It's we just like, like the slicers, which you guys have seen before. They, they're little. We call can them I chickens. Say gamers, <laughs> but like, I mean, it happens to me really all the fast. time too. You I know, fucking... we have a guy we're experimenting with right now who flies and drops these bombs that create these kind of ever-expanding smoke fields that you have to escape from, but because they're super deadly, um, so you really get to use your mobility options to kind of escape that. There's things like the polar. You could be moving through these darker alleys. And as soon as you hear that polar spawn, it suddenly becomes like really spooky and kind of scary. This very tall, elegant looking character that's blindfolded, three orbs that circle around her as her eyes. And we, we basically spun those orbs around her head as a big tell, launched them at the player, and then it activated this tractor beam and it's bringing you in and bringing you in. And then you get this awesome like anticipation of the hair opening up so you know what's about to happen. One thing we've just recently been experimenting with is this idea of elite units. We didn't want the elite units to feel like they're just, oh, this guy's got double health and double damage. We want to make sure the elite units feel like they have different behaviors and have different attacks. So for example, an, an Omnic Grunt, normally he just kind of, he fires his gun, he dies pretty simply. If you fight elite Grunts, his weapon fires in a burst fire pattern. It's very deadly if you're close. And if you manage to take him out, they don't just die right away. They instead can crawl on the ground towards you, and you, you, you know you try to back away because um, you know if they get to you, they can explode. Artillery at BlizzCon. We're all just staring at this, and we're like, "What is? What are we going to do to level this up?" One of the things we really felt wasn't coming through was the damage states. We intend for players to shoot these guns off, but currently it's not reading as something that can happen in the game easily. We change the design, we change the animation, and we go back and forth and just continually iterate. We decided, hey, you know what? We're gonna just delete half of these damage states, so now it's super readable. From an animation standpoint, we decided on the spinning barrel version. We just did this really nice kickback. The tip of the barrel opens up when it's about to fire, and shifts into place and boom! It's really amazing to be fighting an artillery unit and you can see the guns on the side and as you're shooting the guns, they're actually visibly taking damage and then you can blow them off and it reacts and kind of stumbles to the side and really makes you feel like you're there and it's super fun. In a lot of the stuff we've showed so far, you're fighting the null sector. These are evil killing machines intent on marching you down. The way you're gonna stop them is by shooting them. Do you think capitalism ruined games? Sure I feel like the USA and Japan are the only countries who end up making good games. Really making sure that when they take a hit, it feels like are you making the argument that capitalism is the responsible for making good really games sells this because cuba hasn't made a game yet or something one of the cool pieces of technology that we created was what we call chain hit reactions Oftentimes, capitalism is simply just bunched up marching maybe a half a dozen the economic organization in, in which we exist under one. they're gonna knock into their buddies so their we make that intense happen. profit uh their intense really profit functional. driven Corporate uh, culture is the reason for why all of these games are becoming more and more marginally improved the rather than last year at Blizzcon was the new looks for our heroes. Uh, rather than like uh, AAA like, titles that you would get every fucking four or five years that are but also kind of show that new games heroes and evolve unique. and kind of change and move forward. So we have a lot more new looks. So I'm excited to see how players and fans react to all of the ones that we've done so far. Maybe we'll share some of those new looks uh, yeah. today, which would be cool. We're gonna reveal uh, McCree's new look for Overwatch 2 as well as Farah, and we're really excited to show off some of our first villains uh, with Reaper and Widowmaker. But first, I wanted to talk a little bit about technical wear, kind of like technical clothing. What that really is is using you know very techy fabrics as well as you know having very intricate but functional straps designed in a way that it's very aesthetically pleasing. With McCree, we took a couple of different approaches. He's got this classic cowboy look that it's really hard to mess with because if you try to make him too sophisticated or too techy, it might not feel right for the character. But as a concept artist, you always want to change things around and try different shapes. And Gamers are so fucking stupid, I can't get over it. I'm still thinking about how dumb that take was. We also tried like a couple every single thing that you've seen about really companies that too much 
because merging with one another and making games it. worse so that's another piece that, that you intrinsically that understand is bad for the games overall looks and, and, and turns every game into there. fucking Madden. Um, some that were a little bit more it's literally a consequence of capitalism. A more classic cowboy. We gave a little bit it is mind-boggling to me. I mean, there's really a, some great nice chatters kind of that like gave a, great a examples in the chat. Like Hideo Kojima and the arguments that they had with Konami. We didn't want to change your silhouette too much. Um, it was more you about complain about fucking microtransactions so felt really and uh, dog shit DLCs that are like literally within the original game that you're unlocking. White and blue. You one complain about every single fucking thing visor, that massive companies okay, do to increase their profit margins. A bit more of a transparent but when I say this is capitalism, you're like, oh, no, I don't get it. Us to see some of her, some more of her emotions. Reaper was actually the ones I was very excited to work. Like you're literally saying, a lot of potential companies and, and their short-term interests are leading to worse art overall and not as much fun overall. Within that class, but you refuse to put a fucking name on it. We tried a couple takes with the first pass, like completely silver arms, more layers to his jacket. The Reaper's mask is obviously pretty sacred to us. Sounds like you're but blaming the, the developers and people like Jeb when your grievance is with EA Activision. Jeb isn't the CEO. Of the yes, white, of course not. The, this, like, almost, if like, developers, the silver, way that you that would fucking win, the way, the way that you could save this uh, structure is literally if you gave devs more fucking power. Okay, that's it. If devs had more power, so we kind of then games would be fucking awesome again. Cyberpunk looking ones, almost like a futuristic femme fatale, which is basically what Widowmaker is, but she even feels more upgraded. So I'm super glad that we went down this route. We played with different hairstyles too. Widowmaker has the really long ponytail that's really key part of her look. And we really liked the hairstyle on one of the designs that was more of a parade. And it was really interesting look that also preserves Widowmaker's original silhouette with that long ponytail. We've been working a lot with um, our domino engine and making our cloth look better. Some of the most fun I've ever fucking had. Okay, I'm done with this. I don't really care about the cloth stuff. Do you guys care? Should I or should I go into uh, RP? Like they're showing cloth engine in the single player game for all the fucking heroes and stuff. It's just like. What I was going to say is some of the most fun I've had. Is literally. A fan-made, free fucking role-playing server. Some of the most fun I've had on this platform playing video games comes from me playing video games, again, on a role-playing server. Come on, dude. And to people who say capitalism is the reason for all this innovation... Um, capitalism is the uh, reason for all this innovation. Again, I, I repeat to you. Fan-made mods pop the fuck off. Hassan, don't you know you couldn't have no pixel in Venezuela because Che Guevara killed all the game devs in the 50s? Why games like Call of Duty are bad for you, but games like RuneScape are good for you? Socialism is when we mod games? No. But fan-made mods are a perfect example of... of it's, it's a perfect way to eradicate the, the profit motive is the only way that you incentivize people into making great art uh, take that most people have. It's hard to shed them from that really uh, silly world view. Yeah, Dota was fan-made. If you like League of Legends, you should literally fucking recognize that the only reason why League of Legends exists is because some fucking fan made a mod of Warcraft 3 and then it was so successful that uh, it, it created, like, MOBA as a concept. Call Yeah, CS was a mod. Another, exactly, Counter-Strike mod. Some of the most popular fucking games of all time that like gigantic developers try to emulate the success of that people play have started off as mods dude valve quit making games yeah
Daisy mod that started the entire battle royale genre. Same with the H1Z1, but the guy became a capitalist. Leave the pog. The shit that you love, the shit that you love and enjoy and take for granted, that you consider to be world-changing art, that's product of, of uh, people's, like, wildest imaginations that they are able to uh, put on this canvas, okay? And you would never be able to do that with a short-term profit-driven corporate structure. And you aren't able to do that. My car is impounded? Yeah, it's already impounded. Bro, explain Rockstar. Explain Rockstar? What do you want me to explain to you about Rockstar, motherfucker? We're still playing Grand Theft Auto V. Explain Rockstar. It's been like a hundred years since the last fucking Grand Chat Theft Auto game came nine. out. Explain Rockstar. Chat said it was 20. 20 minus 9 equals 11. Put 9 and 11 together, Pepe La. And I'm literally playing a mod! I'm not even playing, like, the actual fucking game. I'm playing a fucking mod right now. Capitalism creates year, year, year after year rehashes. Also, everything good was rehashes. I mean mods. No, mods build on top of the fucking original game when the when a single person drastically fucking reformatting a way that a game was created. Why are you guys saying adios? Wait, what? Why are people leaving? Oh, to the camera. Oh, okay. Because uh, I... Oh, yeah. Oh, I was like... All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. We're back after last night's uh, insanity. After last night's events that uh, put a big... Big fat fucking, big fat fuck you. Into my motherfucking bank account. Not on, we're back. And today's the day where we need to make some fucking money over here, you know? <laughs> it's time to make some motherfucking money over here. Don't forget to eat. Take it easy. I got like six fucking raffle tickets. I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do with this. I still got a fucking absinthe too. I should probably sell this shit. Hold on. You missed a fun event with the boys? I know, I know. I fucking... I miss a lot when I'm fucking sleeping. But what are you gonna do, huh? What are you gonna fucking do? Leave the VIP card behind. True. I think the casino crashed the game, lol. Yeah, I know. It super crashed the fucking game. Recap, please. All right. On this episode. On this episode of Umberto Antonio Donato Pecorino's experiences uh, running around Los Santos... Yesterday was a fucking... Yesterday was crazy. We started getting into the fucking Oxy game. Maron. Shit is popping off over here. It's getting fucking crazy over here. My car is, of course, still stuck in a fucking impound. I'm gonna see if I can try and get it out now. As a matter of fact. Smacker. And then after that... Boys, boys, boys. The drug arc has officially begun. Oh, fuck yeah. There's a motherfucking tow guy. Hey, you motherfucker! Hey, tow guy! 
Yeah, maybe I'll fucking murder someone today. Got him with this fucking tow guy. Hey, tow guy! Are you here? What the fuck is this guy? Bro, you lost so many viewers! Oh my god, dude! What the fuck? Hello? Is anybody here? Hey, tow guy! Hey, hi. Hey, what's going on? All right, uh, here's hi. what it is, okay? Okay. My car has been fucking impounded once again okay. from my motherfucking private parking lot. Okay. Of the, the business the I own, the Rooster's the Rest. Okay. This is the second time it happened. I think it's still a fucking local tow. And okay. uh, they told me last time that they'd take care of it. Okay. If it happens I again. I can try. All right, thank see. you. Peel a fucking banana over here, but it's gonna happen if this keeps going. I I will see what I can do. Come on, on. this motherfucker drove for like three. three All right, seconds. what's your name, sir? My name is Umberto Pecorino, but you can call me Don. Hey, folks. Uh, would you mind handing me your ID? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Here it is. Umberto Pecorino. I have a taxi cab in here. And uh, this is the second fucking time that our private parking lot for the employees only. Has is it a been... taxi? Yes, it is. And it's been subject to fucking towing twice now. Last time there was a uh, there was a person in a wheelchair who reimbursed me and said, you know, uh, let me know if this happens again, you know. Okay, I see it is paid and it's also been released. Wait, what do you mean? But I, it, so the total fee comes out to five seventy five, and it's been paid. It says in the computer, and it's also been released. Wait, but when not, I uh, when I look when I track it, it says it's stored over here. Yeah, it says uh, I I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm a new employee, but um, I can't seem to um let it go from storage. What the fuck does that mean? I, uh, I don't know. I gotta be quite honest. On my tracker, it says it's here. Yeah, it is here. It says paid. It says, um, I just cannot deliver it for some reason. Wait, so how the fuck do I get it out then? I I'm confused. Yeah. I don't know either. Is there an area where there's uh is there an area where there's like a storage here or something? There is an employee only parking, but I don't think that's where you should get the car. Um you wait, um what does it say on your phone? On my phone it says that uh on my phone it says it's stored in impound atoms. Stored, okay. Yeah. Is there a car in here or something? What says um it says paid and it says um that it's been let go. Hey uh can you help this uh, uh Yeah, absolutely. This guy out. What's going I'm having on? Trouble. Thank you. Hello. Uh so, my name's Duke. Uh I'm one of the supervisors here at the impound lot. What can I help you with? What's going on, Duke? All right. So uh here's what's happening. I got a cab that was uh unjustly impounded before. They reimbursed me for it after I paid for it. It got unjustly impounded again from the same fucking spot. A private employee parking lot of the Roosters Rest. Okay, uh, which uh, I what's own. your state ID? My state ID, okay. Yeah, I just need the number to look it up. Yeah, my state ID is 3650. Okay, yeah, I see a taxi here. Uh, looks like it was impounded uh, about a week ago. Yes, you and it was paid sign. for, and uh, it was taken out. The North and then I put it in my system. fucking employee Kissing parking face. lot again, 
and uh, now it says it's stored in impound atoms, and I can't. Uh, it says on my right. tracker that it's here. I don't know where it is though. I can't okay, take it out. Uh, yeah, I, we. It. I think we do have it. I think uh, if you haven't, uh, may, maybe the valets didn't quite get it when you parked it. Uh, you got to make sure to actually, you know, put it all the way away in a garage. Otherwise, the the impound lot valets come and get it so that uh, it's not left out on the street. Yeah, well, it wasn't left out on the street. It was, uh, yeah, but I know what you're saying. Okay, uh, yeah, 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 I didn't do that. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, you just want to make sure you do that. Uh, we have it for you. It's already paid. It's already been approved for release because, uh, like you said, you already took care of it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just have the boys bring it around back for you, and you should I'll be able be to get on your way. No fuss, no muss, no extra payment on your end. Yeah, I, I, what I got to do is uh, take it to my uh, apartment is what you're saying, right? And yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, put it in the garage because otherwise, exactly. you know, sometimes, yeah, 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 I get it. Okay. You just want to make sure that, uh, you know, your valets have the right keys. Oh, I'm getting a call, but let's go check on your car. Yeah, back. you know what? I think I got to, I think I got to take it uh, there once. Hello. No, I, I, I yes, think this what's is going on is and towing. because it's on the impound, because it's been impounded, what I have to do is I take, I need to. Uh, yeah, have you already uh, tried to submit an impound request for it? Yeah, I, I got to take it to my garage and store it first so that it it's not impounded again. All right, it's working. Thank you so much, my friend Duke. Okay, yeah, that's no problem. You're a real lifesaver over here. Yeah, yeah, I know where it is. Uh, I can head up that way. Oh, wait, uh, what the should... fuck? It's damaged. Uh, we should be able to help you out. I'm just helping a guy down here at the uh, impound lot real quick, and then uh, I can get right up that way and help you. Actually, I think you might be one of your colleagues. Wait, who are you talking to? Yeah, yeah. What's your name? I'm Don. Humberto yeah, Pecorino. It's, uh, it's Don. He, uh, he said he worked up at Rooster. I own the Rooster. I'm one of the co-owners. Uh, yeah. What's up? Uh, this feller wants to know if he can play with your Warhammer 40k toys. Who the fuck is saying that? I don't know. I do not I, play with Warhammer fuck. They're not toys. They're figurines, and I do not play with them. Everybody I don't know knows what he's talking about. Okay. It's a lifestyle. Uh, yeah, what? he said it's. It, they're not toys. They're figurines. It's. A, it's a lifestyle. Well, I said the lifestyle. I didn't say it was a lifestyle. That fucking was, guy did. That was more me. That was more me. Yeah, I don't even know what it is. I don't even know what it is. All right, I, I just. Uh, I'm gonna help Don out, and then I'll head up to the Rooster's Rest, and we'll take a look at what's going on up there. Yeah, there's a lot of fucking, uh, there's a lot of shit going on up there. Okay, that... Mr. Demon Blood, I appreciate it. Oh, it's that motherfucker. It, yeah, you're Demon Blood, as he said his name. Oh, I'm gonna fucking kill him. Anyways, uh... Oh, I know that fucking dork. God damn yeah, it. If, uh, if yeah, you he want, fucking we can sucked. do, uh, we can do roadside repair for you, just get you on the road. Uh, we can do that for, like, 250. Wait, so I gotta pay for this? Well, I mean, uh, we ain't the one who damaged your car, and, uh, yeah, yeah that but it just was perfectly parts fine when I, when I left it. Okay, whatever, I don't give a shit. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll give you money. Okay, I appreciate that. I mean, I, if I'm being honest, I used to charge a lot less for roadside repairs, but the government tripled the price of our, uh, materials that we gotta use to fix this shit up. Yeah, no, so this it's is, like, no, no, this is yeah. exactly like the government, I know. It, it's very, yeah. uh... Yeah, it's, uh... <laughs> I, I used to be able to get enough us, to fix you up for like 57 bucks, and they tripled that shit. So, uh, yeah, this is pretty much just parts with a little bit of labor cost on top. That's it. Yeah, okay. So, uh, what, what do I just pay you? You got it on you? You got a repair kit on you? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Uh, you could just uh, pass 250 over to 76, and then I'll get started on this yeah, if you want to pop the course. hood for me. I just okay. I'm real sorry you're having to deal with this, but I think uh, I think once you get your valets back home to take a look at it, you should be good to go. You what did you uh, What did you say it was? Seventy six. That's correct. Yep. Do I put the and uh, you know if you ever need uh, more repairs uh, beyond that, you know if you want somebody to look at the body if it gets all smashed up, some you can give us a call. We got a repair lot down the way. We can do your basic repairs there it is. for you. You got it right. All right, yep, yep, you just want to pop the hood for me. Okay. Hold on. All right, let me get in here and see what's wrong. Okay. 
okay, okay. This actually ain't too bad. Uh, it looks like uh, maybe when they was bringing it uh, back down to the impound lot, uh, might have been one of the hoses got knocked loose, or maybe uh, there oh, was some exactly vandalism exactly what happened. the parking lot it up at Rooster's Rest. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. It happens every fucking time. Okay, are we good now? There you go. Yeah, I would say uh, you're definitely going to want to take it to a body shop to have them look at it a little bit more. I just kind of fixed it up for you there just to get you on the road and definitely have your valets take it so they got the keys and you don't have to deal with this no more. Yeah. All right. Have a good one. You too. I appreciate it. And thank you for... Oh, do you need a ride to fucking Raven Rooster's Rest? Do you need a ride to go to Rooster's Rest or are you going to go oh, with no, your fucking... Oh, gonna, no. We're going to take our toe up. Uh, Mr. Demon Blood needs us to tow some cars. Wait, what? What do you mean he needs to tow some fucking cars? He said there were some cars on the lot that needed to be towed. One was on the sidewalk, and I guess they're blocking customers getting kill in. This motherfucker. That's interesting. Good to know. How, how many how many calls do you get from this demon blood guy? Uh, first time I've ever talked to him. He just said huh. they got two cars up there. How the fuck does he have your number? I'm in the yellow pages. Can you, uh, scooch back maybe like four feet? I'm gonna try to pull this truck out real yeah, fast. Yeah, good to know. Good to know. All right, have a good one, Appreciate boys. You. Right, Thank yeah. you for the information. This motherfucker has been towing. It's gotta be him. People who RP is monotonous, manual labor. That's so fucking funny to me. No, it's... First of all, like, the economy is so fucking, uh... The economy is centered around literally doing the monotonous labor jobs. What's the cab worth now? Probably less than it was yesterday, I assume. $375! $250 for the fucking... Oh, come on, dude! I'm getting fucking robbed over here! I can get, like, new tires at least. Watch it, what are you doing? What I need to do. Oh I just got this shit fucking fixed, what are you doing? Hey Motherfucker! I just, I need to get this fucking store, dude. I, I just, I don't give a shit. I, I just want to sell it. It's so fucking annoying now. If I store it here, it won't automatically go to the fucking impound. And it won't automatically get fucked in the impound every time, okay? That's what the problem is. Oh, what? Oh my god, I almost impounded my own fucking car. No, I didn't impound. I didn't click on it. 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 You've been doing it this whole time? No, you dumb fucks. You're doing that thing again. It's like triggering me. I didn't click on it. And the entire reason why this happened this time, I think, is because like... Oh, dude, you're pissing me off. Oh, you're doing it. Oh, you fuck you, dude. Sh shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, chat. Shut the fuck up. If you want me to keep fucking streaming today and uh, stream roleplay, shut the fuck up and behave, okay? Seriously. We should get rid of him. He's a fucking idiot, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real fucking funny, all right? Real funny. Hey, hey, guy. hey Donnie, how's it going, my friend? Yeah. He's, uh, he's going That's fucking nice. horrible, all right? I just got my fucking car out of the impound. and I just got my car out of the fucking impound. I had to, I had to pay another fucking $700 or some shit. Jesus Christ, Don. Start parking your car when you go to sleep, you dumbass. Donnie, you no, motherfucker. What? 
Hey, what's happening? Um, I, what happened is uh, they someone keeps fucking impounding my car for the rooster's rest. Uh, I just I put it in. I put it in the fucking, I put it in the parking lot this time. Hey, you good, got a good, car? Good. Hey, sorry, hey, did you? Car. No, I'm did your dumbass learn to play oh, poker yet or what? Sorry. <laughs> No, I don't know how to fucking play poker, and uh, I assume neither do you. How much money did you lose last night? How much money did you boys lose last I night? I went up about 12 grand, then I'm I started doubling right my now. bets, and lost it all. I'm gonna stop right now. Hey. Hello? Hey. Anyway, all right. Okay, well, uh, that's... That's, uh, that's devastating, but uh, not surprising but, at all. But we got invited for a private event tonight to test out some things at the casino in about an hour. I can bring seven people, and I want you to be there. All right, well, uh, I'm down to go, except I need a fucking ride over here, all right? Because I'm uh, I'm not taking this fucking thing out and leaving it at the rooster parking lot again just so we can get fucking get towed again and then break again, and then I have to fucking, you know, pay to fix it, and then... Okay, he wants to come pick you up real quick. We're in the house right now. Well, yeah, I'm at the apartments right now. Okay, uh, Tony, you want to go grab Donnie real quick? I will come grab you. Uh, wear something to hide your face. We're going full uh, mask and shit this time. The cops aren't buying our store no more. Wait, wh about what? Oh, you're doing, uh, you're doing a thing. Yeah, we're doing a little house party right now. Oh, all right, mod on. I'm coming right now. I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change. All right, perfect. Okay, can you meet us here then? We're just, uh, I can ping you. Wait, I can't. I don't have a car. Okay, we're coming then. You lazy prick. <laughs> He's in apartments. Let's head there. All right, we'll see you soon, Donnie. All right, perfect. I right, love you. Love you too. All right. Okay. 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 All right. Let's do it. Let's get fucking. Let's get into it, boys. Let's get fucking into it, boys. This is exciting because you know. I finally said it. All right. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Shut up, chat. Yeah, I said it back. Yeah, I fucking said it back. Fuck you. What do you got? What do you want from me? Yeah, I fucking set it back, all right? Give me a fucking break. Why do I always wear the same fucking outfit every time I'm doing crimes? Everybody's gonna fucking know. Get the Lando next time, too. It takes a while for me to fucking develop uh, such strong feelings over here, all right? I don't just fucking throw out the L word that quickly. Also, I should probably put the fucking Oxy down, too. What am I doing? So, Lang, you love him because you said all the nice shit about you earlier? Also, no gun? Wait, why no gun? It's fine to have a gun if you don't uh, pull it out when you're running away from cops, dude. No, having, uh, having a gun doesn't change your situation to armed robbery. Let me take the oxy out and put it here. I have like six donuts. Hey, are you outside? Yeah, yeah, we're outside. Where you in? All right, I'm coming down right now. Uh, I, I don't know where the fuck all my donuts went. I had so many fucking donuts. Should I bring the right, heater or not? Am. Should I bring the nah, heater? Nah, keep it down. Keep it down. No heater. No heater. No heater. All right, well, okay. Listen, hey, you don't want to get caught with it. If we get caught bigger fan, you know what I'm saying? All right, all right, all right. I put it out. All right, I'll come down. Hey, brother. I'm coming Me. down. What up, Danny? What's going on, bro? Hey, what's going on, boys? What's going on, my friend? What up, what up, what up, what up? So, uh, what we're hands? doing, we're doing mass stuff now, huh? We yeah, can't. Anybody got that water? No, I, I also know. need, uh, I mean, I yeah, also I'm... need some fucking food, too, but I was, yeah, I was gonna. Let's real quick, because I'm fucking starving and dying. We gotta hurry up, boys. Yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, so. Oh, come on. Donnie, what the fuck Wait. happened to you last night? You ghosted like a fucking beautiful woman that wanted to have sex with me and then just disappeared at the middle of the night. Wait, look look at my face. Do I have a mask on right now or not? No. Okay, well then, uh, GG's because my fucking mask. Oh, I'm, um, I'm losing it. I'm fucking losing it over here. Okay. Uh, Let me take you to the clothing store. 
Sure. If you win, you can stay up on top with Nino. He's overwatching and shit. No, I get no, no, no. I want to go in. I mean, I'm fine to do that too. I mean, I'll do whatever. It doesn't fucking matter. It's just that. Uh, hold on, I gotta get fucking food. Uh, I'll be back 